An electrocardiogram, or ECG, or the Dutch or German version of the word EKG, is a tool used to visualize the electricity that flows through the heart. An ECG tracing specifically shows how the depolarization wave moves during each heartbeat, which is a wave of positive charge. And the way it looks depends on the set of electrodes you're using. This particular set of electrodes is called lead 2, for example, with one electrode on the right arm and the other on the left leg. So essentially, when the wave's moving toward the left leg electrode, you get a positive deflection, like this big positive deflection corresponding to the wave moving down into the left and right ventricles. To read an ECG, there are a few things to keep in mind, and one of them is figuring out the QRS transition. The chest leads, V1 through V6, view the heart through the horizontal plane, and each one has its own slightly different view. These views will have a mostly positive deflection if a depolarization wave is moving toward them, and a mostly negative deflection if the depolarization wave is moving away from them. The QRS transition zone refers to where the QRS complex switches from being mostly negative to mostly positive from the point of view of the chest leads. The QRS transition usually happens in lead V3 or V4, depending on things like chest lead placement and the exact anatomy of a person's heart. So the QRS transition tells us when the overall QRS vector is aligned in the direction of the chest leads. It's kind of like a way of understanding what's happening to the QRS axis on the horizontal plane. If something alters the heart's overall QRS vector, then the QRS transition zone might shift to the right, toward V1 and V2. An example is a myocardial infarction, which leads to the formation of scar tissue that can't depolarize. Generally speaking, the QRS transition zone will shift away from the region of scar tissue, since it no longer contributes to the overall QRS vector. So in order for it to shift right, the infarction would have to be on the left side of the heart. For example, a blockage in the left circumflex artery can cause infarction of the posterior wall of the left ventricle, and that would lead to a rightward rotation of the QRS transition zone, toward V1 and V2. Another example of a rightward shift is cardiac hypertrophy, because a thicker muscular wall contributes more to the overall QRS vector. So in this case, in order for it to be a shift to the right, it'd have to be a right ventricular hypertrophy. On the flip side, there can also be a shift to the left, toward V5 and V6, and this can have the same causes, except this time it'd be a myocardial infarction on the right side of the heart or hypertrophy on the left side of the heart. All right, as a quick recap, the QRS transition zone in the horizontal plane is where the QRS complex switches from being mostly positive in V5 and V6 to mostly negative in V1 and V2. So it normally happens in lead V3 or V4. The QRS transition zone rotates away from previous myocardial infarctions and toward hypertrophied tissue.